I'd like to just to introduce myself. I'm marketing manager, as Astrid said. I'm working with Polyamida Polymers and Yards for more than 25 years. So it's a double pleasure being here, here in this participating of this event. Uh, I'd like to share about Fulgar. Fulgar is, um, we, we spin Polyamida Yards. We are a company with more than 40 years based in Italy. We have plants in Italy with spinning and texturization, and we have also plants in Sri Lanka and Serbia, and an uh, important stock, stock house with a sales team in Turkey, close to Istanbul. And we produce more than 10,000 types of yarns. Everything is polyamide. We have uh, more than 1,000 employees in the group, and more than uh, the, the participation of exports is more than 50% today. This is Fulgar. Uh, talking about polyamide, I would like to share with you uh, from where to where. So uh, I don't know if you know, but it's an interesting story. Nylon is the first synthetic uh, filament developed. Uh, it, it is developed uh, from the um, United States in 1931 by a chemical uh, American guy, Dr. Carothers. And just uh, he used to work for DuPont. And just a few years later, uh, Nylon arrived to, 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 the co to, to the shops already. So really fast, 1931, we could all already buy some tights with the polyamide. The tights were the first application uh, of the polyamide yarns, so, uh, replacing silk yarns that in that time, in the Second War, it was also tough finding raw materials. So uh, the first product that you could find in the market was tights with polyamide. Later on, we could we can also find polyamide in underwear. Current, we have many, many, many of uh, polyamide uh, yarns in these applications, sportswear and winter coats, coats, jackets, uh, uh, polyamide is, since the characters that we will talk, we find easily these applications for talking about garments, but also uh, due to the characteristics of polyamide, and we, and we are, we'll talk in the next slide, but we can find also polyamide in applications very uh, technical, like balloons, hot, balloon, hot air balloons, where you need uh, good resistance against steering, uh, and also inside our tire, uh, car tires, we can find also polyamide uh, in the tire cord. And in workwear uh, is very, very well applied today. This is the, 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 the information that I would like to share. So you can see the tag of your clothes and search for polyamide. Another important comment is there are many kinds of polyamide in the market today and also to arrive to the market, new, new molecules. So we can find polyamide 6, polyamide 6.6, 6, polyamide 10, 10, polyamide 11, polyamide 4.10, polyamide 5.6. Uh, uh, depends on the construction of the molecule. Some of them partial bio-based, some of them 100% bio-based, some of them 100% of crude oil, petroleum, and each Polyamide presents uh, its characteristics, physical, mechanical, chemical. So it depends on the apl final application. You can choose one or, or, or other. Let's talk a, a little bit about the, the characteristics of polyamide in general. Uh, I prepared some information here. And uh, in order to compare the technical information to what is important to build a new garment. So uh, I'm sorry for the graphics, but I will keep it very, very simple. Here we can see um, uh, the, the weight, specific weight of a fiber. So we can see here grams per cubic centimeter from different fibers that we can find in the market. And lower the weight, lower will be uh, uh, soft, no, softer, no, lighter will be the fabric that will be constructed with uh, this fiber. So here we can see the cotton is heavier than polyester. 
and polyester is heavier than polyamide. What does it mean? It means that it's possible to produce fabrics with polyamide, for example, lighter weight fabrics with the same coverage, coverage of the fabric. So less, uh, you, you, it's a uh, most solid fabric without losing weight, even lighter that we can understand also as more comfort, okay? Uh, another information that I would like to share is the regain. Regain is the capacity of uh, recover humidity of the fiber. Here I put four of the main fibers for sportswear. So polyester, polyamide, cotton, and wool. Higher is the number, higher is the capacity of the fiber of taking uh, the humidity, absorbs the humidity, and also more difficult to release. So for example, uh, cotton and uh, wool presents higher regain comparing to other synthetics, but at the other hand, they take longer to dry. So uh, I believe everybody has in mind, if you go run with a cotton t-shirt, okay, it's comfortable in the beginning, but when you start sweating, the t-shirt the starts to ha become heavier and it's not comfortable. Uh, so when you stop running and you go to make some stretching or drink some water or make a, a round, you see, you keep the wet t-shirt in the body and this is not comfortable. So uh, here we are talking about, we, we know that the most applied synthetic fibers for sportswear are polyamide and polyester in the, the examples that I gave you. Uh, it's nice also to understand and to highlight that uh, higher is the capacity of, of take it, of absorb, higher is, is the, the longer to dry. So here we can see polyamide is, uh, absorbs more than polyester, but at the other hand, since it's less plastic than polyester, the breathability is higher. And another advantage, advantage is the odor that we can feel after wearing polyester t-shirt during the sportswear. We can feel very, very lower odor if we are wearing polyamide. So we can, for every garment that we build, we have to understand the balance of the behaviors of the fibers. So I'm giving you some numbers to show you how uh, we can have more, more comfortable and less um, uh, higher dryability and so on. Uh, I would like also to share the one of the characteristics that is so more, more important for polyamide, that is the tenacity, the resistance. So uh, many of you have already heard about the, the resistance of polyamide is better than polyester, for example, as I showed you the hot air, hot air balloons, workwear, and so on. Why? Uh, there is, do the molecule that is longer than polyester or polyamide 6, polyamide 6, 6 is higher, uh, presents higher resistance. Uh, we can see in this graphic that is a comparison of a um, test named Martindale where they put pieces of fabrics within contact with a abrasion super, super surface that are in contact to the fabric to damage the fabric and to measure the capacity of peeling formation. We don't want peeling in the fabrics. Peeling are the small balls that we see in the old garments and we don't, don't want that. So this is the, a test that we can show uh, why polyamide presents significantly less peeling comparing to polyester, okay? And why we can apply also in another technical application. So it means also talking about sustainability that if a fiber presents higher uh, 
longer life. Behave, the behavior of stability dimension, uh, it does not um, higher higher resistance. It means that garment produced with polyamida stays longer comparing to polyester. Okay, that's why. I also would like to share the, the uh, fifth characteristic regarding to polyamida. Polyamida dies in lower temperature comparing to polyester, for example, it's not needed um, pressure. Polyester, you, you need pressure for dyeing uh, the fabrics. It means for dyeing polyamida, you need less water and less energy that at the end is more sustainable. But let's, let's talk about also uh, not so positive uh, because as I normally say, there is no uh, the perfect fiber in the world. So cotton is nice, but takes too much of water in the plant. Uh, some others that present other problems. So let's, uh, I'd like to share also what is not so positive about polyamide. So the print quality uh, in the cycling garment lines, we can see polyester is more applied. One of the reasons is that one. For, the, for printing, uh, make the sponsoring uh, labels, applying the sponsoring labels in the, gar in the polyamide garments is tougher comparing to polyester. And this is a characteristic of the molecule of the, poly the polyamide and the polyester. So it's true that there is some uh, difficulties. There are some others uh, technical that can be used like, uh, uh, Construction, construction in the seamless with the logo, with the information, with the labels, etc. But that, uh, printing is a not strong uh, characteristic of polyamide. Another point that is important to highlight it is the UV light resistance of polyamide, comparing to acrylic. For, poly, uh, for for an example. When I mean not good resistance about UV light, I mean chemical, uh, like uh, the fab polyamide fabrics after exposed to the UV light lose also the colors. So the black is not that black after exposed to the UV light. The, they, they, they lose a little bit of the, the color, the brightness of the color. And talk, talking about the mechanical resistance of the polyamide fabrics comparing to other synthetics after exposed of UV light is the tearing uh, resistance. So it's easier to, to damage the fabric after UV light exposure of uh, polyamide fabrics comparing to polyester, for example. Uh, for finishing this slide, I would like to share about the price. Uh, we know polyamide yarns price are higher than polyester due to many reasons. One of them is uh, offer. It's easier to poly produce polymer, uh, pro uh, polyester polymers comparing to polyamide 66 polymers in the process, technical process. There are, as consequence, there are few polyamide polymers, fewer polyamide producers in the world. But since I showed you here that we can, polyamide presents a lighter weight, specific weight, and here you can see, uh, you can produce um, lighter weight with the same coverage. It means also, if you compare kilo, price per kilogram, of polyester and price per kilogram of polyamide. At the end, what's interesting for the designers is how many meters you can produce with those yarns. So it's important also do some calculation. And at the end, we can conclude that the difference of, of price, uh, it's not significant, significantly, and maybe it's not the, the, the same difference that we saw when we bought the yarns per, per kilogram, okay? And also I would like uh, to, um, so the, 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 the last slide was more technical and try to, to explain to you the technical characteristics of polyamide and how you can 
uh, choose or not choose polyamide for your fabrics, okay? Now, I would like to change the subject and give you an overview what are, uh, what are the sustainable solutions that we have in nylon or polyamide, polyamide is the technical term for nylon, that we can find in the market already now, so it's already available, and what is new to be launched soon. So here, um, for example, we'll start for bio-based polyamide yarns. The polyamide yarns, as the other synthetic yarns, as polyester, polyacrylic, and also spandex, the origin uh, raw material is crude oil. So oh, uh, we, we need, even if for fibers, the quantity of crude oil that we take from the planet is lower than 4%, they still use crude oil. Uh, in the bio-based polyamide yarns that we can find in the market, partial bio-based polyamide yarns, it means part of the raw material comes from crude oil, part comes from, from renewable raw, uh, raw material. And also we can find 100% bio-based polyamide yarns. Uh, I, in my case, Fulgar, as Fulgar, we we produce and we sell bio-based polyamide yarns, 100%. The raw material comes from castor oil. The castor plant is a plant that grows in, um, in, 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 in fields with almost nothing of water needed. Very, very different, different than cotton, for example. It's a plant that it's not possible to eat. So it's not a, there is no competition for food plants. And it it's possible to produce nice fabrics like polyamide standards with specific also differences like anti-odor characteristic intrinsic of the molecule. We don't do anything else. It's just the polyamide biobase uh, that we have is like this. And also the uh, hydrophility, hygroscopicity of the polyamide biobase that we have is a little bit lower comparing to polyamide standard, but even higher than polyester. So uh, polyester is well applied in sportswear, most applied in sportswear, and presents also the characters of drying faster. In this case, my polyamide is, presents a softer hand than polyester, but it's a better hydros, uh, hydrophilicity, hydrophilic char characteristic. It um, absorbs most water, humidity, and offers more comfortable, more, more comfort to the final users. Okay, uh, all the yarns that Fuga produces are Ecotech certified, the class one. We have also LCA, of course, for all the fibers that we produce and all the labels that are possible to have for each kind of product of technology, technology we have a certified. In this case, we have also a certification to guarantee that the product that we, we are using is 100% bio-based. Going to the second point, biodegradable, um, uh, we have a biodegradable polyamide 6.6. When we talk about biodegradability, it's important, first of all, understand where it biodegrades, after how long time, how long years, how long months, whatever, it, it biodegrades, and in, in which condu condition. How it's tested is important as well. So I'll talk uh, about the, the products that we have in the market. Uh, it's a biodegradable polyamide yarn, polyamide 6-6, that biodegrades in land, after disposed of landfills. It's, uh, I would like to share that landfills, uh, we can find landfills worldwide. Few countries in the world do not have um, landfills. It's um, in land, uh, more than 50%, the PULSE reports 2017 showed us that more than 50% of the garments that we wear 
worldwide speaking, finishing in landfills. Okay, so maybe we think, ah, but I don't, well, I don't throw, around, uh, throw away my, my garments, but I give to the church. Yes, of course, and we have to do it. But at the end, it finishes, 55% finishes in landfills. And landfills, the life of a landfill is around, it's from two to 20 years. So they open a hole, they put all the things, the orange peel, the old onion, everything in the hole, they cover and they put some tubes. Every degradation produces gas, biogas. CH4 and CO2. These gases produced after any degradation are collected for generating more energy. And uh, biogas are produced, as I said, but also biomass. So the bacteria present in the landfills degrade the polyamide yarns and leave in the land organic material that is not toxical. So uh, we have also the tests guaranteeing that there is no toxicity left in the land after the biodegradation. That is so also so important. Also, there is no microfiber left in the land after the degradation because since microplastic is, is still a plastic, the bacteria, even if it's small, small the microplastics are small, they also degrade the microplastic. So no microplex, microplastic or microfiber is left to the land. Um, a, a synthetic, uh, the, the degradation time for a standard synthetic polyester or spandex or polyamide is from 50 to 70 years. So it takes 50 to 70 years, you, can, you, can you imagine? And uh, with our biodegradable polyamide yarns, in less than five years, there is nothing left in the, the, in the land anymore. So it means re you reduce the pollution to the land, to the planet, since you accelerate the, degrad the degradation in that land. You leave free the land in 10 years, 10 times faster, 10, 10 years, no, 10 times faster than a standard synthetic. This is the idea. Many tests were, uh, everything, were, what I'm sharing with you are based in technical tests performed by expert, uh, external laboratories specialized on this kind of tests and following, of course, uh, ASTMs, ISO methods, comparing cellulose, polyamide, and uh, the poly biodegradable polyamide for see the differences, of course. Of course, as well, the all the polyam biodegradable polyamide are uh, is also recyclable the, like a standard polyamide like a standard product product uh, the polyamide that we produce the poly, uh, the polymerization the yarn production the fabric production the dyeing, dyeing of the fabrics the comfort uh, during the using is exactly the same as a standard polyamide just after disposed of landfills, the degradation starts. So there is no risk of degrading before arriving to landfills. Another question that I normally I receive in regards to marine degradation, and we are also already start, uh, studying this degradation. And in a few months, months, we will have also this claim. And not, of course, for thinking about uh, throwing in the sea, old garments, of course, not for this, re this reason, but just for being sure that the microfibers that are released during the dyeing and the finishing industry, industrial uh, phase during the, the dyeing of the fabric, and also domestic laundries in our home, that small pieces of yarns are released and the filters are not able to filter, and they finish in the ocean, how long they take for degrading. So now we know we have many of these microplastics in the sea, but with our uh, biodegradable polyamide yarns that the name is Aminisolico, we will have also uh, another claim that it degrades faster 
in Marine. Um, follow me in the in the LinkedIn or in our website fuga.com and you will receive all the information. For the third topic, I would like to share about recycled post-industrial technology. This is the most common technology that we can find in the market. Uh, we produce the recycled post-industrial for more than five years. We take our internal waste from our spinning phase. We produce new polymers mechanically, and we spin again new yarns. This offer is very, very limited because our waste is so small, for fortunately, and we don't produce more waste to produce more new yarns. So we, we are very, very tight with our offer, but we do that for many, many years. And it is a GRS certified product, Ecotex. We have also the LCA and so on. The quality is very, very good. And of course, the polyamide uh, garments produced with the recycled poly, uh, yarns can be also recycled, recycled again, recycled again, and there is no finish for that. Uh, talking about the fourth and last uh, topic here, uh, it, it, it's a part of the to come solutions. So we will launch in the first semester a uh, new technology. So recycled polyamide yarns post consumer. And uh, this, uh, we are very, very excited about that. We are finishing some details. The quality of the polyamide yarns that we already tested, the first trials presented good quality. So it, it will, for dyeing, for wearing the tenacity, the physical characteristics are very, very good. And uh, the raw material, instead of coming from crude oil, it comes from uh, pyrolysis oil, uh, produced after a pyrolyse process of, performed on car old tires. So our supplier take the old tires available in the market and we have a lot, unfortunately. Good for us, but not for the planet. So we take this raw material, they, they chop, chop, chop the rubber part of the tires. They they uh, burn, they do the pyrolyse phase in a high temperature, and they can have the pyrolysis oil and use for producing the polymers that I buy in uh, replacing the crude oil raw material. So this is very, very an interesting technology. Uh, we will have also Ecotex. We have uh, we are already working in in, <laughs> in uh, the LCA and so on. So it's uh, the first point that I would like to share with you, uh, Charles. I I saw your your sign, and uh, soon we'll have these news to the market. Thank you, Charles. Daniela, that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to be really tight on time but the questions are the most important thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read out the questions publicly, but can I ask you to go on to Slido and answer them? Because some of the questions are really high bar type ones that make you think once again. Um, Anonymous sent in, where can I find nylon based trims and accessories? Are there any leads on suppliers? Well, my immediate reaction is in England, we would go to project plan B but I'm sure you have other suggestions as well, because Anonymous, we don't know where you are. Ben has said, okay. so okay, polyamide, polyamides might be lighter and therefore have more coverage, right? But I'm still paying by the meter rather than paying by the weight of the fabric. <laughs> Anonymous, again, could be someone different. If you combine one of these types of polyamide with elastane, is it no longer recyclable? If so, are you referring to garments made out of one material? So that's one question. Another separate question, what, what about lechate? Will this interrupt biodegradation? Bio Another question, do we think that biodegradable fabrics are lower quality than, recycle, than recycled fabrics? Would they have a lower lifespan, a shorter lifespan? Yet another question, so, Daniela, 
if you give a good presentation, you really stimulate conversation. And it's mm-hmm. great when there are all these questions. But you're going to be on the computer for the next hour typing solutions. Um, biodegradable nylon. Sorry, I don't get it. When disposed in landfill, how do you want to capture or recover the biogas? Yet another question. Thanks, Gemma. Can your yarns be used in knitwear? And does it mix well with natural fibres? I think the answer is yes. Really short answer on that. Um, We have, it seems we have found a solution to the microplastic debate. Why is the industry not using this? And I will talk some more about that in the next presentation. But we also have, but independent on the additives list, can also disrupt um, biodegradation in an aerobic and aerobic environment. So what is the solution for nylon? And how is the diability of mechanically recycled polyamides? So, Daniela, sorry to take away your work line. You're now going to be stuck on a computer and we're going to keep Slido going. But rather more importantly, thank you ever so much for the presentation. I think Marco was very wise when he set the the theme of the show as the sustainable future of nylon. And it's opened up a whole range of opinions, a whole load of new information that we must all revisit the subject. Just for you personally, you now have a lot of questions to answer because you have stimulated a lot of thought. If I give you 30 seconds to say goodbye, what would you like to leave with the audience? Exactly what they are doing now. Question the, the chain. Putting, uh, write me, talk to my competitors, talk to your fabric suppliers. Let's discuss more and more. And we discuss more and more. We learn. And transparency is, is key for this. So let's discuss. Let's study. Let's uh, um, look for sustainability each day by day. Of course, we don't have the perfect solution for today, but if we do something better tomorrow, step by step, we will arrive to, to offer to the market a more sustainable, more sustainable solutions. So uh, transparency, partnership, and uh, sustainability is not easy or cheap, but we have to be asking for data so LECAs, labels, and uh, test reports, and so on. And that's why also I, I am here for supporting the textile chain. Uh, here is my the LinkedIn of my company. We ha- you can also connect connect to me uh, through the LinkedIn, Daniel Antunes. And I will have a pleasure for put you in contact with my customers that produce circular knitting or trims, but because I have already in the market and uh, also answering the questions about the biodegradable points because I have all the answers. Brilliant. Daniela, I also want to bring you back to a panel a couple of hours ago where one of the main messages you concluded on Mm -hmm. is the future is cooperation. This is such a big subject. No one brand can do it by themselves. So we need to form partnerships both vertically, up and down, but also within our industry so that we can move faster towards a better solution. Daniela, we are very grateful for what you have put in. We're going to ask for a little bit extra on the side. Meanwhile, we're going to go off air for about two minutes. And unfortunately, there's some bloke called Charles Ross doing the final presentation. So we'll we'll see you in two minutes.